Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. We're doing a little work on our 2007 Yamaha Grizzly. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had one that wouldn't turn off? Well, that's what's going on here. So, let's head over to the tool bench, talk about some tools and maybe some parts that we're going to need to figure this out. So, let's go. Welcome to the tool bench. Now, typically I can tell you exactly what tools you're going to need to do a project. Well, we're in a little bit of uncharted territory here. So let's just start with the basics. Get a Phillips, a test light, and a good volt ohm meter. What is more important is to look at our exploded diagrams. That's going to show you where each different electrical piece is located on the machine. So I really don't know what parts to tell you yet, but at the end of the video, whatever we choose will be in the description at the bottom of the page. So, once you've got your tools and your diagrams, we can go over there and try to pick this apart. So let's go. Listen, I've replaced the battery on this thing after I've uh, cleaned it up, and I may have done a little too good of a job cleaning it up because with the switch off, it is still live. So we need to figure out what in the world is going on here. I can hear a relay clicking over on this side. So we need to go find out which relay it is and what's triggering it. So instead of uh, fixing a problem, we've created one. It happens, but we're gonna figure it out. When you're trying to diagnose a problem like this, I usually like going straight for the heart. So I wanna look at the ECU first because that is the brain for the whole machine. Now we wanna check this because it could have water intrusion if the seal failed. And if water got into there, that could be causing what we're seeing right now. So let's start there, make sure it's okay. We wanna make sure that seal is still dry, all the connections are dry, and then it's good to go. I don't think there was any water intrusion in it. The connection is dry, the seal looks like it's good to go, but our display is still on. So something in there is still getting triggered. Let's just plug it back in, and actually I wanna look at the physical switch and then the associated cable that's coming back to the ECU. I think we may find something there. This also may explain why the battery was getting drained because I'm feeling the wiring that goes from the actual switch to this connector right here and it's actually warm. So betting there may be a problem in there. So let's disconnect this then actually pull the switch and we're going to see what's going on in there. Because given the amount of creative wiring that I've seen so far, I think somebody may have actually tapped into that wire coming from the switch directly and it's causing us a problem. Right there, that's where I felt it getting hot. And I'd say those wires are definitely touching together. So let's open that up. What a mess. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be reusing this particular switch. That is a mess. Well, there's your problem. That would be why I was uh, not wanting to shut off. Mm. That is only a half a step away from uh, maybe catching your unit on fire. So we've got it completely unwrapped and well, that's kind of the problem. It shouldn't be wrapped. This should be a continuous sheath that uh, you know, encapsulated the wires. Evidently the owner went in there, stripped it back, made some type of connection for who knows what, a stereo system, a set of lights, I don't know. But um, that was a big mistake. And he went and pulled the cabling out because it was not present on the machine and just wrapped the wires back together. Well, guess what? That left them exposed. Eventually they were rubbing together, they've started to burn, and when I actually pressure washed it, sent some water down that wire, started making a connection, turning our display or our machine on and off. So, this is an example of what not to do. If you're going to buy a used machine, ask the owner, did you have any accessories on it that you took off? Because that's what caused this problem. One, it was installed incorrectly, whatever the accessory was, and when he just stripped it out, he didn't do it properly. And that right there, you could have lost your unit over it. So guess what? I'll be heading back to uh, partzilla.com and ordering a new switch for our unit. 
All right, guys, we've got our new switch with the new key. And I can tell you when I pulled the old one out, it was a little too tight in between the fender and this little storage container. So we're gonna remove it to make it easier to reinstall. Just have a couple of Phillips and there's, I guess you call it a snap ring kind of design that holds it in place. Get both of those out. That ring is actually split. We'll just have to get it out of the, cha the channel like that and then feed it around. There we go. And it should just drop straight down. Now we got a clear path. Just make sure this protrusion right here lines up with this notch on the plastic. There it is. And when you go to snug this down, don't get carried away because we're talking about plastic threads here. Doesn't take but a little bit to hold it. Now we can just feed it straight up through. There she goes. Reconnect it. Put the wires back in that channel. Now we can get that little dry storage container back in place. Get this back in the groove. We'll do one side then push it in and get the other side done. All right, guys, we've got our switch installed. Let's make sure it turns on, which it does. And most importantly, let's make sure she'll turn back off. There we go. Now I think we've got something. Let's get that ECU back in place. Just reverse what you did to take it out and remount the regulator rectifier. If you're still having problems with your machine, we have a video that really drills down into the starting system on this particular machine. Well, listen, if you need any parts, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.